Hurricane Ian could be the deadliest storm in Florida's history. The number of deaths potentially substantial. That's the grave assessment from President Biden today. The level of devastation is becoming clearer to one and all, and it is staggering. We're seeing apocalyptic scenes across multiple counties in southwest Florida. This is what it looks like when a Category 4 hurricane with unsurvivable storm surge rips ashore. At least 10 people now confirmed dead, but that number is expected to rise as rescue teams search for survivors and pull victims out of the wreckage. There have been hundreds of rescues of people who decided to ride out the storm and found themselves hopelessly stranded by record-breaking floodwaters. And now, more than two million Floridians are still without power as night begins to fall. This is what it looks like on the ground in the popular tourist town of Fort Myers Beach near their Times Square, one of the hardest hit areas. Homes and condos, restaurants and bars, souvenir shops, businesses both obscure and iconic like the Lani Kai, known to one and all locally, shredded by ferocious winds and ripped apart by storm surge. And this is what's left of the Fort Myers Beach Pier, the concrete deck wiped out along with surrounding buildings. Only the concrete pilings stand tonight. And this is the city of Fort Myers. Large boats washed ashore, strewn all over the place after coming out of the Caloosahatchee River. Before the hurricane made landfall, there were people who told the local newspaper, the Fort Myers News Press, that they were planning to ride out the storm in their boats. The outlook appears to be grim for people who stayed on the barrier island that took the brunt of this storm. See that? This was the Sanibel Causeway. These are the remnants of the causeway and the bridge to the Sanibel Island and beyond that, Captiva. It's the only way on and off those islands. It's now decimated. Five sections of the bridge collapsed. The road washed out, buckled, and torn apart. And here's a satellite image of the causeway when it was still standing before Hurricane Ian removed it. Ian's deadly rampage is far from over. The storm has now strengthened. It's now a hurricane yet again, gaining energy over the Atlantic and expected to make a second landfall in South Carolina, maybe Georgia, tomorrow. Forecasters at the National Hurricane Center say the storm's taking aim at the Carolinas and Georgia with life-threatening flooding, storm surge, and strong winds. We have news team coverage tonight. Meteorologist Brian James with the latest developments on Hurricane Ian's track. Valerie Castro just got back from witnessing the devastation in the small community of Matt Lachey. We'll hear from her. But first to CBC's Perry Russell in hard hit Fort Myers for us tonight. Perry. Chef, these people are tired. You can just see it on their faces. Many of them haven't slept since this hurricane hit yesterday. Some of them were up to their necks in water, and now their journey is just getting started. We were in the water. We meet Mindy Collier sitting on the ground. Her legs sore after surviving Hurricane Ian. I'm ready to move. I'm ready, to, I'm ready to get rid of boats. I don't even want to see water again. He's a boat captain. <laughs> I just like, I'm so done with it. Wearing a life jacket, she says she stood on this flipped over pool table with her husband. How high did the water get on your body? Oh, here. A stranger's pontoon boat crushes her car. Her neighbor's house is burning to the ground. We had, I think, almost 10 foot here. Kevinot says he saved 16 people with his boat including here where his ex-girlfriend's family was packed in a canoe. It's scary. <laughs> but we saved a lot of people that day, so it was good. People that would have never made it. Old people, it was sad. And we had to leave a lot of people too. Streets are underwater. Boats are in front yards. Children ride through waves with the Coast Guard circling. Even a day after the storm, we have flood water that is feet high. Entire neighborhoods are separated by water. The only way people can get to those who are stranded is by some of these trucks that have higher suspension. I didn't think this was going to be that bad of a storm. <laughs> How long I could be. 80-year-old Linda Ogden is riding in a boat being towed. Trapped alone in her house, she says she started tapping on a window with her phone. We thought that we had heard tapping and we looked around and we just could see her face standing on the truck. I poked over the fence and sure enough, she's right there. We all just like dove in and got through her gate. Dove in? Mm -hmm. 
like because it's kind of underwater. Just glad to be able to get in there and help someone, you know. Mindy Collier says she needs help. I just don't know what we're going to do, you know. And so we're, you know, we're trying to get a hold of FEMA and it's, it's all uh, go on the Internet. And uh, well, we don't have any Internet. And Shep, some of the questions these people have for FEMA, how much money will they get? When will they get it? Is it enough to rebuild there? And then on top of all this, will the county let them rebuild there, considering what just happened over the last 24 hours? So yep. much ahead. You know, Perry, I, I was watching our local station, WBBH, uh, in Fort Myers for hours on end today in my office. And, you know, you want to keep an upbeat, but I, there was a lot of sadness, a lot of deep sadness today. One of the issues, too, is the cutoff of communication. So there are people who are in these neighborhoods that are surrounded by water. They have no cell service. So they have no idea what is happening around them just within their own confines of their house. So they're coming to us saying, how bad is it everywhere else? There's such a miscommunication or there's no communication because of the cell service issue here. So you have people wondering what is happening to these barrier islands as we saw the photos there from the helicopters. They have all these questions, all these needs, and right now they just simply cannot be met with the rescue efforts still happening here. Yeah, I'm going to try to get some answers on that in the next few minutes with one of our guests, Perry Russum, to you and your crew in Fort Myers. Thank you.